Hi everybody, it's Diana with Stamping with Di. Welcome to my YouTube channel and this week's Teach Me Tuesdays, episode 225. I have a fun card to share with you today. It's a, a fold I did years ago and it's an explosion card, basically. And um, I thought it was time to revisit that fold. And I have the, the cutest designer series paper and a bundle to use with it. So if you are new to my channel, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Diana and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm in Santan Valley, Arizona. So welcome, welcome. If you are new, um, I would love if you subscribe to my channel and that way you don't miss anything. Also, during the live premiere, I'm in the chat room. So if you have any questions, comments, you know, if you need anything during the live premiere, that's where I'll be. If you're watching the replay, just leave a comment below and then YouTube will let me know and I can reach out to you. Okay, so let's get started. Now close your eyes just for a second while I get my camera adjusted. Okay, I'm gonna use the Country Flowers Bundle. So it has this adorable open line stamp set. So you know I'm gonna love that because I love to color. And then a really, really fun matching um, die. Now keep in mind that through the end of June, the stamp and die bundles are an extra 10% off. So when a bundle comes in a new catalog for the first time, you save 10% on that you know that bundle at the beginning well now there's an additional 10 percent so um and that's till the end of june so you want to make sure you grab that and any of the other ones that you had um on your wish list now that's dies only we also have bundles that have punches and those aren't included okay so let's see here let's do a little bit of stamping now i am going to color with the blends so i'm going to be stamping with my memento so we want this cute little flower here okay and this cute little teapot here and I have one of these in my yard that has I think it's called elephant plant or elephant food plant or something like that and it's like a succulent and uh, it looks so cute I have them all over I even have them in the house it's a great one to um, cut a piece off and just stick it in the in the ground and it roots so it's a great great plant great great um flower if you can find it all right now this is going to go on the inside of my card so there is this image which is also one that you can put in um, one of the flower pots or whatever but I want to stamp it on its side here so it kind of hugs the corner of the card on the inside and then we'll put our greeting as well okay I think that's all the stamping I need to do right. so while they are drying I'm gonna do a little blending on my circle now this is from stitch or stylus shapes and I'm gonna use balmy blue And I just have my blending brush and I'm just going to grab just the back of this just to get a little bit of the color off of there and we're just going to put that balmy blue on the white in this way my white isn't just stark white it has a little bit of color which will go behind my flowers So not only do I want to have that there, I also want to have a little bit of um, splattering. So I just have a little grid sheet here. And I have my handy dandy splatter guard, which is just a thick piece of white cardstock. And I just keep it on my desk. And 
I want, I'm like looking here, for my black, hang on a minute, I'm just going to dump all of my blends out. So I don't have to rummage around for it. All right, so I have my um, basic black, and I want the um, brush side. So I'm just going to take the brush side and I'm going to flick it on the lid. And what that does is it just splatters out some little speckles. So excuse my arm. So now we have, not only do we have that blue, we have little speckles on there too. Let's just add some cuteness to it. All right. So now what these are good and dry. So I'm going to use my cut and emboss and boop I've got them all cut out all right this is a gonna be fussy cut it all right so let's bring this over and let's do do some coloring all right so we're gonna go gray granite for our teacup or our tea teapot so I'm gonna go light gray granite and then we'll put some dark gray granite as well so this is just going to look I have a metal teapot in the backyard and it has that plant in that I was talking about so I'm just kind of making it look like that. I love repurposing things. I love going antiquing and yard sailing and just finding stuff that you can use for other other things. All right, so that was just the light gray granite. Now I'm going to take the dark gray granite and put a little bit here and there as well. And I'm also going to make this look rusty because we're just going to assume that, you know, the water has sat in there and it's it's turned it rusty. So this is just that dark gray. All right, so now I'm going to take my light copper clay and we're going to put a little bit of rust on there, a little bit down here. Just where you think this rust would kind of accumulate. Or maybe a little bit even like right there. All right. Then I'm going to take my light gray granite and we're going to come back and I'm going to soften it just a little bit. And I'm going to kind of wiggle around because I want this pot. I don't want it to be smooth. I want it to have some texture going on. So I'm just really kind of roughing that up with some dots and squiggles. And so then that my um, flower pot has got some texture to it. And I'm going to take my dark one and do the same thing going to put some little dots here and there. And it just doesn't look like a plain teapot. There. So now our teapot has got a little personality. All right. So let's bring our flowers over. Now I'm going to do a couple different greens. So I'm going to go light lemon lime twist. So this is the light. And I'm also going to use the dark. So we just have to move it around so we don't miss any leaves. I swear I always get it done and go, oh, I forgot a leaf. 
again, this is the light lemon lime twist. And I'm going to do the same thing with the flowers on the inside. So if you were watching my live yesterday for my mimeograph and you were in the chat room, I mentioned that I had did this video, got it all the way done, and when I went to turn it off, I realized I had never pushed record. So this is like the third time I've done this card. So I was teasing that I could probably do it blindfolded now. So that hopefully will mean I won't make any mistakes. All right, so this is dark lemon lime. And then I have this, um, I want to say this is like a succulent. Um, and I don't want it to be the same green. So I'm choosing to use the shaded spruce. So it's kind of like a, a cactus or whatever. So I'm just using the dark shaded spruce. And then I'll go in with the light and soften that up a little bit. And then with the light. And I'm just leaving the ends have a little bit of a white tip on some of them. That's dark pecan for the centers of my flowers. And petunia. All right, petunia, petunia. Okay, so petunia, we have dark petunia, and I'm going to have my roses be dark petunia and light petunia. <clears throat> so this um, is a new in color and the light and the dark petunia and the blends are pretty close to each other where the shaded spruce you can see you know the difference right there. I don't notice it as much with the petunia. All right so just going in the center there and then I'll do the light. So they're kind of similar in color. But I'm doing the same as I did the other. I'm just leaving a little bit of white on the, some of the tips there. Okay. And then we'll do the same with our little roses over here and again I'm leaving a little white here and there just so they're not solid okay then I want dark freesia and dark heather and I love those two together so I'm going to go dark heather. Just come out from the where those t flower petals meet. And then dark freesia. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to just leave a little white here and there. And that will soften that island up a little bit okay and then yesterday when I colored the bees I used lemon lime lolly I'm like grabbing the wrong one I used the lemon lolly 
and the daffodil. So I'm going to use those again because they're such a cute um, combo to use because you've got that bright lemon lolly and then the daffodil just kind of grounds that because it's that darker yellow. And then we'll bring a bit of that light back in just to soften that a little bit. All right. Then I have one more thing to color over here. And we can put our card together. All right. So we have, this is the Light Fresh Freesia. And I want to color these, um, these wispy kind of flowers. But instead of just staying within the lines, I'm going out of the lines because I want to make them look kind of furry. Like maybe almost, like, I know they're not a cattail, but I just want them to be kind of a furry flower. So I'm just coloring outside of the lines. And that just looks so cute. All right, so we have all that. I will cut that in a minute. So now let's get to our fun card. So this is the explosion. So we have, um, so this is a four and a quarter by four and a quarter, and it will fit in a regular envelope. It's just a square. And it's important when you mail square cards that you put them in a regular envelope or an envelope that is not square, because the post office will charge you more money for a square card so um, just keep that in mind all right so we have our designer series paper this is with from the country woods 12 by 12 and um, I dropped my thingy on the floor so this is just the little backs that come with the paper and I just cut it four by four punch a hole in it and I keep it hanging by my desk so if I need to reference back to what colors are all right so this is just an eight by eight piece of cardstock and we are going to um, start to fold um, for our card. So you're going to cut, you're going to um, fold this in half. And it's a little hard to see. Let me bring my grid sheet over. Hang on a minute. Because I have, there we go. That might be easier for you to see. Because I've got this wood table and then I have this. So this will make it a little easier. All right. So we have this. We're just going to fold it in half. And I'm just going to, you know, hold that. I'm going to bring this down with my finger so I give it a good crease. But then I'm going to take my bone folder and give it a better crease. Then we're going to open and turn it. So now we're going to fold it the other way. And again, I'm just holding so it doesn't wiggle on me. And then again with the bone folder, give it a good crease. Then we're going to open it up and turn it. And then I want to fold it. Hang on a minute. I went like this. Boop. Boop. Now we want to turn it upside down. All right. And what I like, it's very forgiving. So if you get it folded and you go, oh, I want the other side to show you can flip it all right now i'm going to get this out of the way okay so we have this so now you have now you want to bring these together like that so see i just brought these edges in so see how I fold? You just kind of bring that in, and it makes a square. Now, you want to pull this back. So what I like to do is I want to pull this back. But you don't want to just, you know, pull it back quickly because you don't want to tear your um, points. So what I like to do is I like to take my fingernail, and I just give it a little, little kind of crease at the point. So again, I take at that point area and just kind of bend it a little bit and that's just going to help when you fold because you want to fold this down and again I'm using my finger first it's a little more forgiving 
my finger than if I do the bone folder right at the beginning and then we can use the bone folder. All right. So see, there you go. So I'm, I have a couple of different variations of the fold that I'm going to show you after. All right, so here we have that. All right, so let's bring my circle over. And you can have it go like, like this, but depending on how you stamped this, okay? So we stamp this this way, so you want your fold to come this direction. If you want your fold to come down like that, then you would glue this and you'd have to stamp your greeting the opposite way. So just kind of, um, cause this card is, is, um, can look so many different ways, just depending on how you fold. All right. So we're going to glue this in here with some green tip. There we go. I need to remember to put my lid on it because it gets um, gummy if I don't. All right. So we have, again, bring this over so we have our placement right. So it's going to go like this. Okay. Then we have our circle. So our circle is going to go right in the center, but you want to be careful. So just like when we do our Z fold cards or any of those other fun fold cards, you have to be careful how you glue your um, center on, because if I just put dimensionals all the way around, I'm going to glue it closed and I, I don't want to glue it closed. So I know that my circle is going to go right in here. Put it okay. And then we have our pot. So let's bring our pot over. Or our teapot. And then we'll put that on our circle. And then we have our flowers. Now the flowers, you can put different ways. And I'm going to put my dimensionals on the card. But you can put the flowers like this. You can put them like this. It really just depends on how you want them. So I'm going to put them that way. And then they have a little bit of height to them. And then we have our sending love. And my snips. All right, so I'm just going to fussy cut my sending love. And I'm going to go around my love. So I'm squeezing with my scissor hand and I'm moving the paper with my left hand. Okay. So there we have our cute little sending love. And I'm going to put it on here. So I'm trying to, I might do it opposite to the other card, just so you can see the difference. And then you might go, oh, I like it on this side, or I like it on that side. So I'm going to do this one a little different, and then you can decide. So I'm going to cut a little piece of dimensional. Hang on a minute. And I don't want to close it. Remember I just said you don't want to close it. Okay. I need to cut that shorter. And we're going to put that right there so that it's part of this circle, right? And then we'll put this on here like 
like that. Okay. And then I'm going to use the same dimensionals, or the same um, embellishments that I used yesterday. And these are the adhesive back dots for days. So I'm going to use these little yellow ones, because I've got yellow flowers on there. One, two, and three. All right, let me get that out of the way. So look how cute this little card is. All right, now what we want to do to finish it, we want to glue it to our crumb cake. So it's going to glue on here, because you don't want to give it like this, because it's kind of um, loose, right? All right, so we're just going to put our adhesive. I'm just using the green chip glue again. We're going to glue this to our crumb right in the center. Now it just adds a little bit of stability. You can stamp, you know, made by on the back. But now you have your cute little explosion card. So when the person gets it, see it fits right in the envelope. But they have this fun little surprise, like, oh, so lucky to know you. So you always want to start with a square. So I played with these other patterns, so I can show you. So this is the same paper. I just folded it the opposite way. So this one, you can see this paper more, where this one, let's see what I mean. It gives it a totally different look. And I used the yellow. And then here's one with that same paper. I just used a different pattern. And it, this one has a different look too, just because you have that dark, you know, you've got that dark, designer series paper you see in the beginning on the front so it makes it kind of darker <clears throat> but but what's fun is so I was playing around and these are little tiny ones look how tiny these are so this would be fun to um, make up some little tiny ones and you maybe you could put them in your purse right and you if you give like a um, tip or something and you could give somebody like a little thank you um, but and these were just four by four so these were eight by eight, these were four by four. So look at the difference in size. But as long as you start with a square, it's just the same fold. Um, but the eight by eight fits in um, you know, the regular envelope. If you're just giving somebody a card um, that you're handing to them, you could make it as big as you want if you weren't worried about putting it in an envelope. All right, so let me say see you later, alligator. So, oh my gosh such a fun fold. I'm going to have to do that more often um, because it is super cute and it's just, I love fun folds and it makes, um, it just makes the card even more special, right? Because um, it just has motion going on to it. Now this one I didn't mention. So this one right here, so see when I folded this, that front little triangle, I folded it a little smaller so that I wanted to see the little, um, I wanted to see these lines. I'm like trying to do this with the video. I wanted to see that line paper underneath. So I folded that little triangle a little smaller. So see, now you can see that, that line paper under there. Um, but they're all fun. They are so fun. Let me know if you have done this fold. Let me know if um, maybe you did years ago too and you're like, oh my gosh. I haven't done an explosion car in forever. So um, let me know what you think. All right, so I'm going to say see you later. I will see you Friday for my dyes shorts. That will be at 3 o'clock, Arizona time, same time, same channel. Have a good night, and I'll see you Friday. Bye for now.